Hi, we're here with Erin LeCount from Dinosaur Ridge. Um, could you just tell us your job title and tell us what you do for Dinosaur Ridge first? Sure, I'm the Education Programs Coordinator there. I coordinate programs with schools, daycares, senior centers, anyone that wants to come out for a tour. Um, I also run summer camp programs, pretty much anything having to do with education there, I get to oversee. So. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Tell us a little bit about Dinosaur Ridge yeah, for people definitely. who don't know what Dinosaur Ridge is. Sure. Um, we are an outdoor dinosaur museum and geology museum west of Denver um, at C470 West Alameda. <coughs> so we're only 30 minutes away from Denver. We're not that far away. A lot of people think that we're out in the mountains somewhere. We have to hike seven miles to get to us. It's like, no, it's a road. It just drives right yeah. up to it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so we have a visitor center there on the east side, and we also have a visitor center there on the um, west side. Uh, at Red Rocks Park entrance number one mm -hmm. um, and the Alameda road cut that goes up and over Dinosaur Ridge um, that's where all of our fossils and locations are where all the signs are you can go up and you can do a hike you can do a guided tour you can um, do all sorts of fun stuff there we've got dig areas for kids and we have special programs throughout the summer so, so it's it's there's an actual museum or or building where you you keep fossils and such like such yeah and you were mentioning earlier um, are a lot of the fossils in the ground? I've never been, so this is yeah. why my question sounds oh, that's so silly. Okay, that's but, fine. Um, no, you're good. Um, are a lot of the fossils still in the ground, or how does how is how is that? Did you yeah, dig them all up, or uh, no? Actually, um, we've, we haven't ever actually dug us friends of Dinosaur Ridge has never dug anything out of Dinosaur Ridge. Um, mm. It's a protected site. It's a natural okay. national okay. landmark, and um, basically, we're just the keepers of the fossils. Um, we have over 300 footprints. Um, about from made by about 37 different individual animals um, all in the same layer it's a massive slope kind of looks like dinosaur national monument with tracks mm -hmm. instead of bones uh, and we tend to see um, more footprints around it you can go in different areas um, we also have amazing areas of, of ripple marks from where the waves were washing up because we used to be an ocean right right on the coast of an ocean and uh, we also have dinosaur bones a couple dozen dinosaur bones still in the rock all of these are still where they were laid down 150 to 100 million years ago wow. um, we do have indoor exhibits that also contain um, replicas things things like these um, but also uh, some real fossils in that that are local locally collected in the area so um, okay. by other museums or or by um, if they fall down we have someone come out and collect them so we can put them on display Awesome. Very cool. You know, I got to go as a geology student in college when I was a junior. I went up to Dinosaur Ridge as part of the, mm -hmm. the program, and it was awesome. And I still remember uh, one particular slab of rock that had just fantastic footprints in it. And I was thinking, you know, I talk to my students sometimes about the idea that, hey, we live in this state that is just so rich with, you know, all kinds of geologic and paleontological mm -hmm. history. But specifically dinosaurs, if you're into dinosaurs, there's all kinds of stuff all over the state. But uh, could you maybe talk a little about why is it that we have dinosaur fossils here in Colorado? Like, why does that even happen? And what was the environment like for them in, you know, proto-Colorado way back in the day? Right, back in the day. Um, the neat thing about Colorado is that the way the mountains rose here kind of allows us, it didn't just smash everything when they came up. Sure, the Rocky Mountains rose pretty quickly in terms of a mountain range, right? right? I mean, 30 million years right. isn't quick, but geologically, that's pretty fast. Uh, but what it did is, it, is, as it rose, it basically took the flat layers that were there, kind of like a giant stack of pancakes, um, and, and broke them up and split them out and pushed them side, out to the side. So if you go to Grand Junction on the other side of the mountains, you can see these same exact layers that we see here. They're just tilted the other way. And in fact, Dinosaur mm -hmm. National Park yeah. is on the opposite side. It's on the, the opposite slope, that the part that opened slope. up on the other side of Colorado. Right, and, so, and it's the same layers. You're looking right, at the same right. layers there. Dinosaur National Monument in Vernal, Utah, um, that has all the gorgeous dinosaur bones and, and thousands and thousands upon thousands of dinosaur bones, where on our side, we have dinosaur bones as well from the same era the, from the Jurassic period, same dinos, um, and then we also end up having on the opposite side tracks. The nice thing about Dinosaur Ridge is that it used to be flat, oldest on the bottom, youngest on the top, and you know our dinosaur bones are our oldest, so they're on the bottom technically. When the mountains rose, about started rising about 70 million years ago, so dinosaurs didn't hike the mountains, um, <laughs> but they surfed, which is cool. Right. So uh, <laughs> what happened is as the mountains rose, it took Dinosaur Ridge and kind of tilted it up sideways and put it on its edge, which let us access the dinosaur bones that would technically be 400, 500 feet below 
the surface. If it hadn't tilted it due to the mountain uplift, we wouldn't be able to see them. All we'd maybe see is the tracks if they hadn't already eroded away. It's a hard sandstone, so it doesn't want to go away very easily. It's a tough rock. Um, but because of that uplift that occurred all along the front range of the Rocky Mountains, um, on both sides of the Rocky Mountains, which happened to go right through the middle of us, we get a chance to find all these awesome dinosaur locations, and not just dino locations, other stuff too. I'm sure you guys are familiar with snow mass. Um, mm -hmm. Other locations that um, were just kind of perfect for the uplift, the layering, and the right age to be exposed. Um, and that's kind of why we find so many, not just dinosaurs, but that's why we find mostly a lot of dinosaurs here in Colorado, just because the layer, the right layers popped up at the right time. Luckily, they had stuff in them. It feels so fortunate, you know, just I like know. so, like what are the chances? Right. But it also makes you think, kind of what must be buried under the ground that we haven't seen yet. That we haven't <laughs> seen, yeah. Every kid wants to dig up their backyard. I am like, sure, especially oh, after they come to you Dinosaur know, Ridge. Yeah, I know, they it. do, oh and they're gosh. like, I'm going to go dig up my yard. And I'm like, oh, I can't really encourage that. Please don't dig up your yard. Well, so speaking of kids, so what uh, what kind of tours do you offer for students, for young kids, for families? What do people do when they come to Dinosaur Ridge? Uh, we offer a little bit of everything. You can come and do a tour with your family if you'd like. We've got um, $8 tours that also include a trip through our indoor museum. Uh, you can... Um, come out with a school group. Teachers can sign up with me for school for school uh, programs. We've got scholarships for low-income schools. We've also got uh, uh, five different programs that you can pick and we can tailor our program to be what you're doing in the classroom. If you want more of a geology focus, because that's what you're focusing on, we can do that. If you want more of a fossil focus or geologic time focus, we can do that. If you want more of an ecology focus, we can do that because you're looking at direct evidence of Colorado when it was <coughs> uh, kind of like the Serengeti. 150 million years ago or 100 million years ago when we were Florida essentially mm -hmm. so you can really see the fossils um, and the plants and the landscapes and how they changed over time so if you're doing a climate focus we can focus on that um, we've got programs for little kids if you have the the preschool through second graders that aren't going to do very well on a one and a half hour lecture based tour <laughs> um, <laughs> Even some high schoolers don't do well on that one, <laughs> yeah. uh, or adults. <laughs> but uh, we have some more hands-on programs. We have a couple dig areas where kids get to go in and look at the replica dinosaur bones, uncover them, and then try and figure out the story of the dinosaur. Works really great for those little kids. Um, we do a little bit of everything in between. We have senior centers come out. We do uh, tours that's for, cool. for everyone. Yeah. That's really, that's just so fantastic. Oh, that's really cool. When do you think, what would be the best time of year to go visit? Like, you know, maybe not the best when it's super cold? Yeah, like yesterday, no. Not the best not time. Not the best day to come visit. Um, anytime that our fossils are exposed is, is really good. Um, people tend to try and put it off until spring and summer, um, which is great. That's absolutely fine. You can do that. There are a ton of really awesome days, January, February, March, yeah. 75 degrees. Come <laughs> on out. There's not many people there. Most people are too afraid to come out in the, in the winter or in you know late fall because they're like, ah, oh, but the weather might be bad. It's like, right, well, we're not. And they mountains. think that we're in Vail, you know? <laughs> so um, yeah, we're, we're a hop, skip, and a jump. We're that first, the, I always describe us as that little hill in your way when you're trying to get to Red Rocks. Mm -hmm. That's us. Yeah, um, everybody's past Dinosaur Ridge. That's Ridden. us, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> past Dinosaur Ridge, but not many people realize that that is what it is. And yeah, it's gorgeous. You can come see us pretty much any time of the year, as long as it's kind of sunny. If there's a foot of snow, you can come. You'll have a nice walk. You'll go on a nice hike. You mm -hmm. might not see the tracks because right. they're, mm -hmm. they're under there, I promise. <laughs> but um, it's going to be tough to, to see it if there's bad weather. So mm -hmm. pretty much any time. I'm gonna have to get back out there soon. I know. It's too long for me. I pass it off when I go to Red Rocks. And think, oh, right. I go back to oh, there. Yeah. But oh, I really need to go. I, I'm gonna definitely be there. F fantastic. Would you tell us a little bit about yeah. um, what you've brought with us? Sure. Um, we've got some Colorado locals, some natives. Uh, awesome. I brought, I brought oh, to right. hang out with you guys. They're more native um, than, than we are. That's right. True. They're the original natives. Mm -hmm. um, the they're, the, they're the hipster natives of Colorado. Right. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, Triceratops is the classic. This is the forehead oh. of a Triceratops. Oh, we call these so cool. the brow play, horns. Like, yeah, play with it. That's, that's absolutely. Amazing. Wow. They're replicas, so they're nice and light. Um, we typically make it's replicas. Huge. As you can see, this one has been what I call loved. Uh, by children. Yes. Um, well loved. No and gravity. Oh yeah, Becca, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What, what, um, these, what is this made? Is this plaster? It's kind of like a resin. A it's resin. like a plastic. Sure. Yeah, it's pretty durable, pretty nice. stable. Well, this is great. I could wear this on um, my head. Yeah, that's no lightweight. With this kind I've of been weight. thinking of mounting them on the hood of my car. Oh, and yeah, having that would like, be way cool. I yeah. like that. That's a great idea. Don't um, get in your way. Okay, <laughs> right? Watch out. Exactly. 
Especially if you have a tiny car like I do, oh, it would be hilarious. Um, but Triceratops really is, an, is a local. It was first found at um, 13th and Federal. Um, they found a set of, <laughs> of brow horns. 13th and, 13th and Federal, yeah, when they were when they were building streets in Denver in 1887. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know what it was. They'd never seen it before. Um, mm -hmm. All they found was this part. So they assumed a type of ancient bison. So the very first Triceratops name bison. was actually Bison alticornis. And they didn't know what it was until a few years later up in Wyoming, they found the whole skull and they went, oh. And that's, that's just bison thing. high crown. But yeah, that's yeah. exactly. And that's so they nice. ended up calling it Triceratops, which means three-horned face. Dinosaur names sound really cool, but when you actually break them down into their Greek <laughs> or Latin, simple. it's super simple, like a right. three-horned face triceratops. Um, oh. And then T-Rex, of course, eating yes. triceratops. This is a T-Rex tooth. That's the crown of the tooth. The root would have been just as long uh -huh. in there. They had very deep-rooted teeth because um, they're, they're biting through animals just the same size as them. Mm -hmm. Uh, also a local, the first evidence of, of T-Rex in Colorado is South Table Mountain, 1874. Okay. They found a tooth just like that, didn't know what it was, thought it was a horn, um, yeah, well, because T-Rex wasn't actually found and named until 1905. So uh, they were just confused. I mean, how could that be a tooth? It's huge. That's so cool. Yeah. You know, you mentioned <laughs> that they found the Triceratops horns or crown when they were building a road, essentially. Right. Mm -hmm. and I was going to mention, so my, my roommate is actually a paleontologist. Oh, cool. And her job is she goes out to build sites, dig sites, and mm -hmm. it's, it's so often building a road. Yeah. And she just has to stand there while people are, you know, pulling earth out and yeah. rock out. And she's just waiting for something to pop up to help identify it. And I think it's so interesting. It's like maybe we think that, oh, you know, somebody goes out and thinks, oh, I'm going to find a dinosaur here. Right. But it's much more often incidental. It's just we oh, had to dig up the ground and we ran into this big thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, typically. Um, just like, like the discovery at Snowmass. You know, they were building, uh, rebuilding the parts of the reservoir, and they hit a, a tusk off of a skull from a, a mastodon with a bulldozer, and it was, oh, cool, look at that. I wonder what else is here. They you know? Found, mm. Incredible. Uh, uh, triceratops bones at the Coors Field mm -hmm. site. That's why Dinger is the mascot of the Rockies. Right, correct. Right. correct. Oh, yeah. Okay. You can, they have those over at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. We're working on doing a Dinger Day this year as an event at Dino Ridge. We're trying to get oh, the bones. Cool. Um, they're, they're what we would call scant material. Yeah. It's, it's as they identify, it's unidentifiable ceratopsian, which just means some kind of horned dinosaur. Of course, we label it Triceratops. It's the most common one here in Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, and we find other bones not too far away that are identifiable as Triceratops. Um, arguably the most important dinosaur to Colorado this is gonna subjective, I'm saying that, mm -hmm. because it's my favorite dinosaur, mm -hmm. and that's uh, Stegosaurus. Right. Stegosaurus uh. being our state fossil. Oh, is that a fin? This is one of the, yeah, one of the plates on the Whoa. back. This is the very last plate oh on the back of the tail, right before those really cool spikes, wow. right on the back of the <laughs> tail. So some of them could get, I mean, this is one of the smaller of the plates on I'm the back. Kidding. Some of them could be this tall. They're huge. Um, plates oh on the very high part of the back. Colorado state fossil, super weird dinosaur. Um, they did have keratin over the plates because um, you see, actually, you can actually see their blood vessels on the sides yeah. of the bone. Oh. Um, being that they're on the outside this? of the bone, that's not usually where you should have your blood on the outside of anything. Um, so there's keratin on the outside of that. So, that, so are, yeah. is that mm -hmm. those? Yeah, those grooves there. And do we have a good names. understanding of why Stegosaurus had the plates on their back? It's, it's I've good. heard different things, but it sounds like yeah. there's not a consensus, right? No, there's not. I mean, typically, if you're going to break it down biologically, mm -hmm. and how I, I always teach it, depending on the age I'm teaching at, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> you do things for a couple of reasons. One, you know, you've got obviously defense or identification. Right? You totally. want to look big and scare something off, or look big and look pretty. Because yep. um, the other thing that it's, it's either food or sex with animals. Right, right. Really, mm -hmm. that's it. Right, protection um, or peacock style. Yeah, right? protection mm -hmm. or peacock. Now, having those big plates all along its back, not so great for protection. They're what we call osteoderms. Osteo meaning bone, derm meaning skin. Mm -hmm. So they're actually just embedded in the skin. They're not attached to the spine at mm -hmm. all. So it's kind of like having a big bony fingernail that can just get ripped off and leave a giant gaping wound and it'll get infection and you'll die. Uh, not great armor, especially since it didn't cover 90% right, 90, 90 right. of the body. Um, but really great for being tall, looking pretty. Um, and with the blood vessels in there being covered by keratin or what we think would be keratin over the top, fingernail stuff, you can always pump blood in there and have the blood circulate around. And if you stand, 
with your body into a breeze that the breeze would actually cool the blood and circulate it. Mm -hmm. um, so it is kind of like an air conditioner, kind of like a heater. You can turn into the sun and warm up say, a little bit. That's what mm -hmm. I heard was that they use them, that they would warm the themselves in the sun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That move, that's so that cool that they sense. could also cool themselves down in the same right. way. Yeah, what the same a genius way. thought, like if you just had a little bit of your blood mm -hmm. pass over a large surface area and cool right. that part of the blood down, that'll cool your internal body temperature down. Right. And the question always was, well, if they're warm blooded, why would they need that? Because they can just regulate. Well, I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, you're warm blooded, but you're not as warm blooded as we are. Right. You're also 35 feet long and you're standing a good 12, 12 and a half feet tall with those plates on your back. You've got a lot of square footage of skin that you might need to cool down a little bit more rapidly than if you can do it yourself, especially since they lived here in Colorado when it was kind of like north central Africa, very dry, kind of floodplainy, mm -hmm. um, Serengeti without any grass because grass wasn't around yet. Uh, so you're going to see um, things like that with animals that live there today. If you look at African elephants, they have those huge ears and this, yeah. they're just filled with blood vessels because mm. despite the fact that they're mammals, they're warm-blooded, they flap their ears a lot right. because moving air over the blood vessels in their ears and circulating it through their body cools them down. Yep. And we can see that with, with these as well. Um, well, even dogs, a, right? Dogs mm -hmm. use dogs pant. You know, pant it seems yep. like the yeah. most inefficient system ever, but it seems to yeah. work. It well, works right? for them. <laughs> so yeah, fun, fun things with comparing things from the modern day and things of the past, just yeah. being able to look into how did these animals live and 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 because, I mean, we, and pending time machines, you can't go back there and take a, take a peek. Uh, but you get a chance to look and do comparisons with modern day. I mean, they always say the present is the key to the past, right? So good. we uh, end up looking at all Did the animals we yesterday? have. I might have said that yesterday. Nice, <laughs> nice. You always got to name drop that. That's, <laughs> a, that's a good one. It's a classic. Yeah, yeah, it's a classic. Oh, that's awesome. And oh, I, really I'm reading great. here, Stegosaurus is our Colorado State fossil. Yeah. That's awesome. Why? Why is, is there a reason for that? Uh, a bunch of fourth graders, I believe in the mid-90s, late 90s. Oh. Um, Colorado didn't have a state fossil. Um, and there were a few other states that did at the time. So they were like, well, why not go with a local? The very first Stegosaurus that was ever dug up was found at Dinosaur Ridge in 1887. The, very, the Stegosaurus that named all other Stegosaurus wow. is the first wow. be all end all. And you can actually go up onto Dinosaur Ridge and touch the bones that are left of the first, world's first Stegosaurus, which is cool. And so they picked Stegosaurus because it's a local. It was found locally. The bones are on display um, at Dinosaur Ridge and the material that they removed in the 1800s back at Yale has actually, a lot of it has come home to live at the Morrison Natural History Museum. So oh, that, all the bones are on display, you can go see them. Um, so they picked it and they petitioned the governor and, and it was picked right after that as our state fossil. So a bunch of nosy fourth graders got us that one. Oh, so. Good, well good for nosy That's fourth super, graders. I know, good for nosy <laughs> fourth graders. That's super awesome. It makes a lot of sense too. Yeah, so it's a good one to pick. Honestly. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Well, um, gosh, I'm really fascinated by this, but we do have to good. say goodbye. But this, this has been really wonderful. Thank you for joining us on the show and sharing all of the information about Dinosaur Ridge and just what you do. and and all of the opportunities that are available at Dinosaur Ridge, by the way.